But at the end of the day, uh, he'd never get charged or go to prison. I mean, he made too much money for the people that he basically worked for. Do so, are you rap? And regardless, you married or not, and you, and you got a boyfriend that works for you, a real boyfriend who used to be a dancer. I mean, you got to to be able to do that type of to a woman and other women. Suge Knight has officially entered the discussion surrounding Cassie's legal action against Diddy. During a recent Behind Bars podcast, Suge disclosed additional details about another woman allegedly harmed by Diddy. Concurrently, Roger Bonds, Diddy's former chief of security and confidant, mentioned in Cassie's lawsuit, shared a startling message hinting at his efforts to shield Cassie from physical mistreatment by Diddy. With growing speculation among fans, there is a sense that Diddy might soon find himself incarcerated alongside Suge Knight suggesting that the legal pressure on him is intensifying. The pressing question now centers on the specific revelations made by Suge regarding Diddy's history of violence and the identity of the woman he identified as another victim of Diddy's actions. Let's dissect it in today's video. But of course, before we go any further, make sure first that you subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for more updates and videos like this. If it was a rapper, that mess with guys and go both ways. Pac didn't feel that was good, He because Pac felt. In the latest installment of his Collect Call with Suge Knight podcast, Suge Knight resumes his critique of Diddy, shedding more light on Diddy's alleged history of mistreating women. According to Suge, Diddy physically maltreated a female aide who failed to inform him about Cassie's rumored connection with Kid Cudi, coinciding with an attack on Cassie's mother. Confirming Cassie's claims in the lawsuit, Kid Cudi's representative later verified that Diddy had indeed set fire to Kid Cudi's vehicle. Identified by Suge as the actress Lauren London's sister, Capricorn Clark was the assistant in question. In response to the news of Diddy settling the lawsuit with Cassie, Capricorn posted a cryptic message on Instagram quoting the Bible, Don't take the path of the wicked. Don't follow those who do evil. Stay away from that path. Don't go near it. Turn around and go another way, she added. Doors be unlocked. You've got to be willing to walk away from the money. Full stop. 2011 was hell. Super Bowl and get award. Plus he can beat this out of two and they pay for it. And In a 2017 interview, Capricorn discussed her role as both Diddy's personal assistant and the worldwide brand director for his record company, Bad Boy, from 2001 to 2012, without explicitly stating the reason for her departure. Reports at the time suggested her dismissal by Diddy for alleged theft. However, recent revelations on Capricorn's Instagram and comments from Suge Knight's podcast suggest a different narrative, indicating that she may have left after experiencing physical attacks by Diddy. Considering Capricorn's position as Diddy's personal assistant, the likelihood of her being bound by a non-disclosure agreement NDA, is high, restricting her from openly discussing her encounters. The disconcerting aspect remains the apparent knowledge of Diddy's mistreatment of Cassie by several individuals, including women, who continued working with him until a realization struck. Roger Bonds, Diddy's chief of security, was among those aware of the rapper's actions, mentioned in Cassie's complaint as the one who intervened to prevent Diddy from attacking her. Cassie recounted a 2009 incident where Diddy became agitated, seeing her conversing with a music manager at an L.A. party. And a lot of times when she was doing this, she was high, high as a kite. She was high on all types of stuff. Most of these encounters were very horrific for her and... As detailed in Cassie's lawsuit, she alleges that while leaving the club, Diddy physically maltreated her in the car, forcing her into a corner and stomping on her face. According to Cassie, Roger Bonds, a member of the security staff, attempted to intervene to stop the attacks, but was unable to de-escalate the situation. Recently, Roger seemingly corroborated Cassie's account by sharing a post on Instagram, stating, This is not meant to be threats or snitching or anything like that against Cassie or Diddy or anyone else. This is me telling my truth as I truly remember it, for two reasons only. It's because I have four daughters. So, on all dudes, my truth is, I saw it. I saw it and was involved with it for years. Allegations that she leveled in this federal lawsuit. She is making all these allegations. Great. 
human traffic. In the now deleted post, Roger Bonds captioned his statement with, I'm willing to tell my truth because for so many years, I was quiet. Nothing matters now but family. Adding to Suge Knight's previous remarks about Diddy's alleged maltreatment on Capricorn Clark, Suge went on to claim that Interscope Records played a role in concealing the incident. According to Suge, Interscope assisted Diddy in covering up the matter and facilitated a settlement payment to Capricorn, preventing legal action against Diddy. Suge contends that it was an individual associated with Interscope who issued the payment to ensure Diddy wouldn't face jail time. You know, and for his having somebody, you know, have no, no, two f you know, that's some weirdo sh Moreover, Suge expanded on Diddy's connections, mentioning his association with Russell Simmons, who reportedly relocated to Indonesia after facing multiple accusations of SA. The intertwining of these narratives adds a layer of complexity to the unfolding events implicating not only individual actions, but also broader industry dynamics and relationships. Suge Knight has expressed skepticism about the likelihood of Diddy facing charges, suggesting that influential figures even more powerful than himself shield Diddy from legal consequences. Despite issuing a provocative threat to make Diddy clean toilets if they were to meet in prison, Suge believes that Diddy's long-standing influence and wealth would protect him. The notion of Puffy's involvement in various activities has been public knowledge for an extended period, and according to Suge, Diddy's financial stature and connections would prevent any serious legal repercussions. Suge points out that Diddy's legal team, along with the lawyers representing the opposing party, strategically left out certain details during the legal proceedings. They seemingly chose not to delve into all aspects of the case, potentially to facilitate a settlement. Shug implies that the negotiation settled at $30 million, and he anticipates a swift resolution to the matter. In his view, the legal process may be expedited to avoid further revelations that could be damaging to Diddy's reputation and financial standing. Do so, are you rap, and you, and you got a boyfriend that works for you? A real boyfriend who used to be a dancer? Puck would study the artifacts. Puck was real smart. It's okay. It's okay. Indeed, Diddy has faced ongoing criticism from fans, particularly in connection to allegations that he exploited and controlled young male musicians such as Justin Bieber and Usher. Jaguar Wright, a former artist associated with Bad Boy, has previously claimed that she walked in on a compromising situation involving R&B artist Christopher Williams and Diddy. According to a former lawyer for Bad Boy, Jaguar suggested that, for Diddy, it's not solely about gender orientation, but rather about asserting power and control over others. If it was a rapper that messed with guys and go both ways, Pac didn't feel that was good. He was, cause Pac the speculation circulating suggests that Diddy might eventually face a situation akin to what Suge Knight has experienced. Fans are expressing disbelief that Diddy has managed to avoid legal repercussions for an extended period. Some fans note that Suge Knight, despite not being viewed as an angel, made similar claims over a decade ago in a documentary, asserting that Diddy was somehow connected to the passing of Tupac Shakur and the notorious B.I.G. The sentiment among fans is that, like Cassie, who was surrounded by people allegedly not acting in her best interests, Diddy may have navigated through a complex web of controversies for an extended period. We didn't say the part why they were testing your guts out. Everybody knows they've been testing your guts out. So that's settled or that's coming out if we have to fight it. So I'm quite sure they're going to settle like ASAP. But if you need to sell it, I'm going to grant you. My single boy. <laughs> Meanwhile, before Suge Knight spoke about Diddy, there has already been one individual that revealed why Diddy wasn't able to be caught for his crimes, and that is Kanye himself. In a bold assertion, Kanye West has proposed the idea that figures like Diddy managed to evade legal consequences by brokering deals with powerful individuals, positioning themselves as gatekeepers within the industry. This provocative claim from Kanye adds a compelling dimension to the ongoing conversation surrounding Diddy's associations. Legal challenges and the intricate dynamics at play within the realms of entertainment and politics. The suggestion implies a level of maneuvering and influence that goes beyond the surface, hinting at a complex web of relationships and agreements that may contribute to the avoidance of legal repercussions. Kanye West continued to fuel controversy by mentioning Diddy in an impromptu encounter with paparazzi. 
highlighting his belief that, unlike some celebrities, he remains uncontrolled due to not having taken a life. He confidently asserted that the truth would ultimately prevail. The announcement of Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy triggered a widespread internet reaction, with many speculating that Diddy's legal challenges, especially those involving serious allegations, might be insurmountable. Of particular interest was the element of human trafficking. Intriguingly, the public's awareness of these accusations was largely through Cassie's legal proceedings. It's noteworthy that Jaguar Wright has made similar claims three years prior, asserting that Diddy was involved in criminal activity, stating because he's a dealer and he's using music and entertainment traffic. However, the impact of such allegations gained considerable momentum with the initiation of legal action by Cassie. The recent developments surrounding Diddy's legal troubles have spurred speculation among fans. Many are now theorizing that Diddy's ability to seemingly evade criminal charges may be intricately tied to his connections with influential figures within the establishment. This line of conjecture suggests that his network of relationships and associations could be playing a crucial role in shielding him from legal repercussions. The notion that powerful connections may be influencing the trajectory of Diddy's legal challenges adds another layer of complexity to the ongoing narrative surrounding the rapper and entrepreneur. But what are your thoughts on all of this? Let us know in the comments. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this.